good morning. Thank you for being here, those who are here in person. Thanks as well to those who are joining us online. So I don't have a lot of announcements today, but I do have one really good announcement. The keys that had been lost have been found. <laughs> so, there we go. So, so we've got our keys back, and we don't have to make a bunch of copies, and that's all a, a great relief. So uh, just in terms of what's coming, there's not a whole lot to say. The schedule there is in the, uh, the bulletin inserts. The main thing I would note is that we do have our Tuesday stuff. Our occasional Tuesday events happen this week. So a group of us will meet at 4.15 on Tuesday in person in Google Meets to uh, talk about another bit of Julian of Norwich, this 14th century Christian mystic. And then that evening, uh, a group of us will gather and watch an episode of The Chosen and then talk about it. So come to any of those things if you're interested. And then uh, just one last thing from me, there is a table with books back there purchased by Chris. And uh, so those are for folks to take. So as you're on your way out, take a look at the books. And if you see someone that you like, please take it. Uh, oh, I guess speaking of Chris, we also do have our, you know, which still remains a new thing for us, our Wednesday prayer group, which is 11. Other things to say before we continue? Uh, Robert? Yeah, so, so thank you, Robert. Let me just repeat uh, that for those who would, might not have been able to hear. Robert will be walking in September in a walk to end Alzheimer's. And so if you'd like to support that cause and if you'd like to support his, uh, his effort, then um, you can talk to him. And Robert, if I could get that information from you, I'll include that in my emails, the way to, to do that. Anything else before we begin? Our service will begin in just a moment. Please turn in your bright blue St. David's songbooks to number 14. We'll sing verses 1 and 2. 14. Our service this morning continues on the screen, also on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Again, that's 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And, and blessed, blessed be God's, God's kingdom, kingdom now, now and forever. And, forever. Amen. Amen. and let us pray together the collect for purity. Almighty God, uh, to, to you all hearts are open, open all desires desire known, and, and from you no know secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together the collect for the day on the screen, also the contemporary version on the insert. 
Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness and mercifully give us those things which for our unworthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask. Through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue now with the praise song. Please turn in your bright blue St. David songbooks to number 52. 52. Our first reading is from 2 Samuel. Now when the king was settled in his house and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, see now, I am living in the house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, go, do all that you have in mind for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, are you the one to build me a house to live in? 
I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent and in a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now, therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more as formerly from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house when your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring after you, who shall come forth from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Our psalm this morning is Psalm 89, verses 20 through 37, and that is found on page 715 in the Book of Common Prayer. We will read this responsibly by whole verse, and I will begin. I have found David my servant, with my holy oil have I anointed him. My hand will hold him fast, and my arm will make him strong. No enemy shall deceive him, nor any wicked man bring him down. I will crush his foes before him and strike down those who hate him. My faithfulness and love shall be with him, and he shall be victorious through my name. I shall make his dominion extend from the great sea to the river. He will say to me, You are my Father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. I will make him my firstborn, and higher than the kings of the earth. I will keep my love for him forever, and my covenant will stand firm for him. I will establish his line forever, and his throne as the days of heaven. If his children forsake my law, and do not walk according to my judgments, if they break my statutes, and do not keep my commandments, I will tr I will punish their transgressions with a rod, and their iniquities with the lash. But I will not take my love from him, nor let my faithfulness prove false. I will not break my covenant, nor change what has gone out of my lips. Once for all I have sworn by my holiness, I will not lie to David. His line shall endure forever, and his throne as the sun before me. It shall stand fast forevermore like the moon, the abiding witness in the sky. Our second reading is from Ephesians chapter 2. Remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth called the uncircumcision by those who are called the circumcision, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands, Remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of my promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace. In his flesh, he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. 
He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances that he may create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him, both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are also built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory Glory to you, Lord Christ. Christ. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they were hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. And as he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to the land at Gesenaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, People at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever he was, where he was. And whenever he went into the villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they may touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. <coughs> the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Since last week I had a, a couple of conversations that all follow the same basic pattern. One of them was my conversation with my spiritual director. And, uh, and so in it, as I was chatting with him earlier this week, uh, we got to fretting about the state of the world and all the various problems in the world. And of course, I don't really need to list out problems, but here are the two that, that I was fretting about uh, this week. So one, of course, the political campaigns for the last you know, decade or two have been often pretty unpleasant, often with a certain ugliness, a kind of anger beneath the surface, or maybe not beneath the surface, but right on, a kind of almost uh, threaten violence, um, but to shoot one of the candidates is not okay. And down that road lies madness, that, that road of political violence. So that was a thing I was fretting about. The other, a little closer to home, uh, I read in the, the Northampton newspaper uh, some statistics about homelessness in our area. 
So in the county just north of, uh, of uh, Hampshire County, Franklin County, homelessness has doubled in the last year. In Franklin County, it's up by 50%. I didn't see numbers for Hamden County, so I don't know what's happening right here, but I do know that at the parish cupboard, they report very dramatically increased demand on their services. So I was talking to my spiritual director and I was fretting about those problems and those are real problems. But what he helped me to see is that my fretting itself was a kind of problem. And so here's at least what I experienced, what I believe is not unique to me. I face these problems and they seem overwhelming. It is clear that they are beyond my capacity to solve. And after a little bit, I stick my head in the sand and I turn away and I do nothing. Or at least that's my temptation. And uh, of course, for Christians to turn away from the problems of the world is to refuse to participate in God's mission. And so, so what we grappled with, as I had some conversations that suggest to me others maybe do too, is faced with the problems of the world that are beyond our capacity to solve, how do we keep going without simply putting our head in the sand? So that was the issue I brought to our readings for this week. And our reading was helpful, especially our Old Testament reading. I love the story of David, uh, which is full of drama. And, uh, and so we are continuing on from our reading from last week in David. So here's where we were last week with David. He uh, has become now the king of the reunited kingdom of Israel. And he's got himself this new capital, Jerusalem, which he's just conquered. And he's processed the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem with much pomp and circumstance. And now as we move into our reading for this morning, He's got himself a, a nice new spiffy palace there in his capital. And I'm just saying what it says there, which we just heard. He thought after a little bit, to his credit, you know, I'm living in this spiffy new palace. And the Ark of the Covenant, that symbol of God's presence in our midst, that most holy thing that we have from our tradition, already ancient in, in David's day, that's in a tent. That doesn't seem okay. So I'm going to build a temple. And the temple will house the ark with appropriate grandeur. That's David's plan. That seemed like a good and pious plan. And then, of course, God sends Nathan the prophet to David and says, you know, that's a good plan. That's not my plan. And that's not what's going to happen. God says, Nathan says, on God's behalf, are you, David, the one to build me, God, a house to live in? It seems like you're maybe forgetting how this works. You're forgetting how you came to be where you are. And before we go any farther, it's worth noting that David is one of the great adventurers of all time. And David's story in the Old Testament reads a little bit like an action novel, or maybe the script for an action movie, with David <coughs> as the action hero. And David is tough, and he is smart, and he is brave, and he is talented. And he has come from almost nothing to be the king of Israel, and it's an impressive story. But here's what God says to him. You know all that stuff? I did that. I, God, made that happen. Not you. Despite all your talent and your toughness and your courage. So here are the series of quotes. And the key is just to notice this, this sort of repeated refrain. I took you from the pasture, from falling the sheep to be prince over my people Israel. I will make for you a great name. I will appoint a place for myself. I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord will make you a house. I will raise up your offspring after you. I will establish his, that Solomon's kingdom. I, God, am actually the one who is in charge. I, God, am the one who makes things happen. And maybe, David, it'd be good for you to remember that. That's the message. Now we bring that forward to our time. And our problems are bigger than David's problems because our world is bigger and more complicated. And not many of us, and I certainly don't, have the talent and the courage and the uh, faithfulness and so on and so forth of David. And so as I think about those problems that we face, and I do face my own real inadequacy, if the problems need me to solve them, the problems of our world, or of our nation, of our area, this church, problems in my own life, if it's up to me to solve those problems. We're out of luck. Okay. And so what I hear God saying to David in this moment is that David actually, tough and impressive though he was, 
also couldn't do the job that needed to be done. He couldn't do what was before him except with God's help. And I can't, and we can't do the job before us except with God's help. And that can be a frustrating thing to hear, but it's also a liberating thing to hear. Because it turns out that our world needs saving, and it's not actually my job to save it. Which is good, because otherwise it's not going to be saved. God is the one, God in Christ is the one to save the world. And so we can put that burden down, and if we begin to feel overwhelmed, we can remember, this is not mine to do. The problems are too big for me. Let's hand them over to God and let God take care of it. That's an important and liberating message. But there is a sequel that is also really important, I think. So David does not build the temple. That was not his to do. That was for his son Solomon, as, as Nathan tells him. And Solomon will be the one to build the temple. But here's what David did over the course of his reign. He came up with the plans for the temple. I mean, the design. He raised the money for the construction. He gathered all the materials. He appointed the people who were going to do the different jobs. That's for the construction, but also not only that. He said, all right, you know, you're going to be the gatekeepers, and you're going to be, I should do back there, you're going to be the musicians, and, you know, this group of the Levites, that's the deacons, this is going to be your role, and the other ones will do something else, the priest. David divided all of that up, and those jobs were hereditary. So David put in place all of the pieces for the construction, and David set the terms according to which the temple would function for generations. So here's the point. It was not David's job to build the temple. <coughs> but that didn't mean David should do nothing. It was David's job to do what David was called to do and to then combine that hopefully with others, in his case with Solomon, trusting that God will bring about whatever it is that God wants to happen, the temple being built. And that's exactly the same for us. And so we are not called to save the world. That's God's job. But God wants to involve us in that process. And so God gives us gifts. And God calls us, and God doesn't call us to do it all, but God calls us to do something. And our task as faithful people is to discern what that call is and to do that and then to let it go and to trust that God will take it from there. Not to try to do everything, but not to do nothing, but to do what God calls us to do. And so this is my prayer for us, for our world too. My prayer is that we can listen for that call and that we can discern what it is that is for us to do and what we have to leave for others. And then I pray that God will help us to have whatever gifts, whatever talents, whatever courage that we need to do what it is that God is calling us to do and that we can do it with faithfulness. And I say that in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> And now please stand as you're able, and let's affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. That's on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer, also on the screen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. 
We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue now with the prayers of the people. For the prayers of the people, we will be using Form 3. This is found on page 387 in the Book of Common Prayer. And it should be on the screen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Today, from the Anglican Cycle of Prayer, we pray especially for the Nippon Sei Kokai, Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. Today, from our diocesan <coughs> cycle of prayer, we pray especially for the Christ Trinity Church in Sheffield, the Reverend Jane Griesbach, United Thank Offering, and the National Network of Episcopal Church Employees. We pray for all bishops, priests and deacons, that they, they may be faithful, faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice, justice and peace on earth. earth. Today from our world prayer cycle, we pray especially for Costa Rica and the Ivory Coast. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Today, from our parish prayer cycle, we pray especially for our Friday Bible study, Janet Kopazinski, Catherine Koziel, and the Kozik and Conlon families. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. We pray for those on our prayer list that's on the inside cover of the bulletin. Please bring this home and you can pray for these people throughout the week. And in addition to all of those people, we're also asking for prayers for Alicia, Kathy and Elizabeth for successful procedures and for all the people who are traveling. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. We give you thanks for our new Wednesday prayer group and Chris Loy for her leadership. The flowers adorning our altar are given in loving memory of Carolyn Dion on her 100th year birthday and in loving memory of John Orsi from Helene Robbins. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Turning to page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we have sinned, sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. 
Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you're able for the peace. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us greet one another. Mr. Robert, to Kenny, and Jeff, way in the back, on this side, all the way forward. So, peace to Terry. So, and after you, peace to, after you've had a chance to greet folks to your satisfaction, uh, have have a seat while Terry sets the table. <coughs> Please turn in your bright blue St. David song books to number 143. turn to the great thanksgiving we have a whole host of birthdays we do. so we have linda seabury from last Ooh, week happy birthday. and then we got a big day coming on tuesday it's barbara lafayette yep. and also bob rendricks yep. and also abby's is that an anthony no we're just waving okay so and then uh and then we also have this week victoria littlefield mm -hmm. and anthony too is it anthony's birthday also is it anthony's birthday no. All right, so coming on August 5th. So it's coming, but not we're not there yet. But also Victoria Littlefield, Al Riberty, Barbara Migna, and Roxanne Zern. So quite a few. Other birthdays? And Kim? My father-in-law is 92 on Friday. Wow, so Kim's father-in-law, 92, and, and Lynn? So Kayla's just turned 14, and, uh, and, and uh, there's a wonderful woman from St. Andrews, Ruth Maylot, who turned 93. 
something pretty big uh, this last week. So, others? No? So let us pray uh, to the birthday prayer. That should be on the screen. Also page 830 in the Book of Common Prayer. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may thy peace, which passeth understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And happy birthday all around. And we also have at least one anniversary. So the, uh, the Rendrix anniversary, mm -hmm. which I think is a big one, uh, that's uh, on the 20th. I guess that was yesterday. Mm -hmm. And a good friend of mine named David and his wife Lisa also had an anniversary yesterday. Other anniversaries? So let us pray the anniversary prayer. That's on page 431 in the prayer book, also on the screen. O oh God, uh, you have so consecrated, consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send therefore your blessing upon these your servants, that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now we continue with the great thanksgiving, a form from the, the uh, New Zealand prayer book, which you can find on the screen. The Lord is here. God's Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to offer thanks and praise. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time, you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being, sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. Even though we turn from you again and again, you call us to yourself, and in every age promise liberation. From your own being, you sent Jesus among us, incarnate of the Holy Spirit, and born of Mary, our sister. In him you have made us a holy people by sending upon us your holy and life-giving spirit who came with signs from heaven to lead your church into all truth. In the power of the spirit and made ready with the spirit's gifts, we take the joy of the gospel into all the world. Now we join hands around your table and with all creation, we sing your praise for your unending love. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. Holy, 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 God of sit as you are able. To you indeed be glory, almighty God, because on the night before he died, your son Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given you thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this to remember me. 
<clears throat> After supper, he took the cup. When he had given you thanks, he gave it to them and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood poured out for you. Do this as often as you drink it to remember me. Therefore, loving God, recalling now Christ's death and resurrection and glorious ascension, we ask you to accept this, our sacrifice of praise. Send your Holy Spirit, burning as a flame, gentle as a dove, upon us and upon our celebration, that we may be fed with the body and blood of your Son. Grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love, through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and Creator, in voices of unending praise. And together, blessed are you, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore, let us, let us keep, keep the, the feast. feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
And now please stand as you're able and let us pray together the post-communion prayer on the screen, also on page 365 in the Book of Common Prayer. Again, that's page 365. Eternal God, Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. 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 Please turn in your dark blue hymnals to number 552. 552. We'll sing verses 1 through 3. Be to God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 